If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 30 minutes, we do our intro conversation. We talk about the Super Bowl. Recap the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. That's like basketball, right? Yes, yeah. totally. Then we talk about rooting for underdogs and those who have stayed on top. Why is it that we always want the underdog to win? Why is everybody hating on Tom Brady? Yeah. What's going on here? That's weak. Uh, then we talk about Justin's Seattle trip, my Napa trip, and then Adam's... Where'd you go, Adam? I went up to uh, Bernardis up in Carmel Valley. And Bernardes. Adam's Bernardis trip. We really didn't talk about my Bernardis trip. We didn't actually. talk that much. Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> we didn't talk at all, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we talk about the importance of good health we'll get to that. for all of your relationships, not just your relationship with yourself, but your relationship with your partner and your business and the people around you. We also mentioned Thrive Market. Now, we are sponsored by Thrive Market. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, here is what you will get. One month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more, and free shipping. And then we mention Organifi. They're the makers, of course, of the very popular green juice that we enjoy so much, but they have other products. We are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MINDPUMP without a space, you'll get a discount. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, in our opinion, how important are all natural Skin care and cosmetic type products like deodorant, face wash, and toothpaste. This particular individual is a struggling college student. Save money, have some stinky pits. Wants yeah. to know if it's uh, if it makes sense to save money and get the other stuff or buy the more natural stuff. We talk about that. We're get drunk on Friday. Stay away from patchouli oil. Exactly. Exactly. The next question was: uh, As a human race, we tend to think we have all the answers, and then you know, ten years later, we find out, oh shit, gives us cancer. Or something else crazy. Or, uh, what do we think about stuff today? Like, let's speculate. What do we think that we're doing now that in the future we're going to look back on and be like, you were wrong? Hmm. The next question was, do we have any advice for people who want to start podcasting? It's funny because I can think of three people now who have a podcast who originally were listeners of Mind Pump who said that our show inspired them to start their own podcast. Only three? Uh, there's three that I can yeah. think oh, of. Oh, I know at least like and, seven or eight of those. Uh, I, and a couple like of them 10. are actually yeah. pretty successful. So we give some podcasting advice. If you're thinking about building your own brand, building your own business, or you just want to get your voice out, we talk a little bit about that in this episode. And the last question, uh, what do we think is the healthiest sport for your body? And what do we think is the unhealthiest sport for your body? And then we also go off on what we think uh, who we think is the best all-around total athlete. Also, uh, it is February. I know a lot of you are trying to stay motivated because you started working out in January. It's the beginning of the year. You want to get fit. You want to lose body fat. You want to stay lean. You want to be healthy, mobile, strong. Uh, well, we've got the answers for you. Or at least we've got the plans for you. One of the problems when people start on a fitness journey or one of the reasons why people stop on their fitness journey is they don't have a lot of structure. They know they need to move. They know they need to work out. They know they need to eat better. But they it gets boring after a while because they do the same thing over and over again or their body just stops responding. Well, if you want to plan, the best plan that we know of are the MAPS plans or the MAPS workouts. And we also have bundles. Bundles put all these plans together in ways specific towards people's goals. The most popular one is the MAPS Super Bundle it's one year worth of exercise programming. In other words, if you enroll in the MAP Super Bundle, you could start today, and from now until next year, you'll have your workouts planned for. You'll know what to do during the weeks. You'll know what to do every month, what the goals you're focusing on. We have exercise demos. We have everything planned out for you in these programs, and you can find them all at mindpumpmedia.com. It's T-shirt time. T-shirts. We had 19 reviews this last week, so we're awesome. giving out five shirts. The winners are Stare25, Going Yak Sauce, <laughs> Richie Dela, Mike15834, and your pal Julie. Mm. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out I to you. I want to get in on that yak sauce. Chicka, chicka, chicka. Oh. 
Oh, he's got the chicken now. Oh, boy. <clears throat> he's got the chicken now. Did you, uh, I know you're, you, you're allergic to sports, but do you watch the Super Bowl or do you not even watch the Super Bowl? <laughs> I, uh, I caught a glimpse of it. Uh, and then this, he broke out in hives. This, wow. we, this weekend, we well, this weekend I was in um, Napa and St. Helena with uh, Jessica, and we were ce- celebrating our birthdays and doing that whole thing. And we went to a bar, not a bar like a restaurant, but they had a bar, so I could see the Super Bowl was on. And when I looked at the Super Bowl, it was there was eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia was at I want to say thirty two, and uh, New England was thirty. Three, I think they were only ahead by a point, but I guess apparently Philly won. Yeah, yeah Philly won. It was an incredible game. So they were behind by one, and then they won, huh? Uh, I don't know if that's the way the scoring went or not. If that's correct, I, I don't. It was know. like they were like there was like really close, but yeah, they oh, the whole winning. game was close. Yeah. The whole game is was never. Uh, I don't think anyone ever was ahead by a touchdown. It was always. I, oh, actually, I take that back. There was a ten point lead that Philly had at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, this is their first Super Bowl, right? Yeah, they never won a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, it's a big, it's a big. Deal. I heard they well, celebrated since, by uh, destroying their city again. I think it was the si- it was the sixties they won, or the last time they won. No, so. I don't think they've ever won. I don't think they ever have. I thought they didn't like the sixties. No, there's a great. There's the there, remember there's the um, the Philadelphia Eagles story that um, what's his face played. Oh yeah, Marky Mark. Yeah, Marky Mark played uh-huh. that guy or whatever. So there's a, but they they haven't won a Super Bowl. Uh, wow. Yeah, that well, congrats. But what a game! It was just an incredible game. I'm so, I'm a you know I'm not even a Patriots fan or an Eagles fan, no. but I do I do like. It, there's a lot of my friends that are rooting against Tom Brady, and I know a lot of people want to wanted to see him lose because they hate the Patriots. Whatever. I'm the opposite. Uh-huh. I, when I see some like, I'm so impressed by him and the, and the Patriots as a team and as a whole and as an organization that I enjoy watching history happen. Like mm-hmm. I want to be able to say that. I was alive and I watched Joe Montana, Steve Young, Peyton Manning, and now Tom Brady, who, in my opinion, is the greatest of all time. And I don't think it's even debatable. But obviously, there's still people out there like my uncle. So, who likes uh, to do the Patriots? Yeah, that's that's it. what's interesting. People hate on greatness, you know. Right. And it's like I've I've always been the opposite, you know. Like if you recognize greatness and you can see somebody in in their abilities far surpass everybody else's it's for a reason I, I don't know if it's so much that people hate on greatness as much as people like to see an underdog do well you know what i mean because uh, no there's no I, I think it's i think i think he gets a lot th- of love I think too th- i think that's true too mm, sal i don't think yeah. you're wrong there but i'm with justin that i think that look at it like how people even look at people look at uh not not even sports related just success like I meet somebody. I meet somebody. Let's use. We'll use Bradley Martin as an example because I think he's uh, built his name and success a different way than than Mind Pump has. I think a lot of people uh, want to judge judge him that do it differently, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I've just never been that way. I'm fascinated by someone like that. I see someone like that, and somebody else may watch their videos and go like, "Oh, he's doing stupid stuff," or "Who cares?" and "Oh, he's not smart." Like they they'll, they're gonna pick him apart. It's all small stuff though. Like if he was a real dick and like like you know he was a like he cheated like crazy, which I know there's people that'll say that he's done a lot of cheating and this and that, but. Um, you know, for me, it's like, it's way, way more challenging to always be on top. Right. It's so much harder. The underdog thing is cool, you know, but being on top and staying on top is way fucking it's what, harder. It's what the Warriors are dealing with right now. So if you watch the Warriors play sports right now or play games, you know, they, they are arguably one of the best dynasties ever right now, or they're paving the way of being one of the greatest dynasties ever right now. And I've watched every game this season, and it's crazy because every team, like they just lost the other day to a, like an average team, Utah. Utah's a terrible team. But everybody brings their best game night in, night yes. out because you're playing the fucking... You're playing, Everybody gets way more motivated. The, right, because their yeah. team is going to go down in history and you're you're at this time where you're at in your career on this other team, You nobody knows who you are, nobody knows about that team, no one cares about Utah, no one talks about them right now because they're, they're, there's nothing special going on over there. But yet, if you can be the team that beats the Warriors because they seem to be so unbeatable by everybody, it's such a big deal. So staying on top is a motherfucker. A, and the Patriots God, yeah. are the same way. There's a couple yep. psychological uh, situations that happen with that. Like if you're the winner, the champion, I should say, if you consistently win, you've got a little bit of an advantage in the sense that you have this aura of invincibility or this 
you know, I am, yeah, like yeah. I'm the, and, and you feel that and, and your opponents may even feel that may, they may, they may even be uh, intimidated by that. But on the flip side, if you're the kind of person that's driven by, you know, beating the best, uh, it may backfire. And I, the thing that I think about um, underdogs is when you're watching a sport or a competition, and I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a physical sport or it's business or any other thing that's competition. You as a spectator, you as an observer, you tend to identify with the underdog more than the champion because most people consider themselves an underdog. Most people don't consider themselves the best at everything. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Right. Like when you see someone struggle from the bottom, you're like, you know what? That guy's just like me. Yeah. And they can project themselves. And in people, there. that's Americans in particular. I mean, I wonder if it says something about us, though, like how you do view that. Like, because like, I, I agree with that also. But I also, I like with Justin, where I view an athlete like that and I'm more, uh, I'm impressed. I'm not even a Patriots fan, but yet no, yeah. I like appreciate watching greatness Mm -hmm. instead of being threatened by it and like rooting for them to lose Mm -hmm. i'm like i'm rooting for them to keep going like fuck man. well i'll give you an example let's say you're watching um a fight because and i'm using a fight as an example because it's so clear there's only two people right boxing or whatever mma and there's a guy that's just undefeated you want to see or you'll love the person more if you see the champion struggle to remain the champion like if he goes through wars but then still wins mm-hmm. then you're like fuck he's a you know the champion versus he just blows everybody away and, and it's really easy still gonna get lots of respect and all that but just from an identification per, you know uh, standpoint you want to see that that kind of challenge a good example of that is when uh muhammad ali fought uh, chuck wepner which is a that's a that's did you a, find the story on him yet? Did you watch it? I never watched it. On oh Netflix. my god! I know a lot about it. it because it was. Oh, a, you need to watch it. I'm such a Rocky fan, you know. So I've read about the story and I've seen the fight, the actual fight. You can watch the the video of it, where you know Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest fighters of all time. See the Brooklyn Brawler, right? The, the no, Bronx, the Bronx, the, 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 Bronx, the Brompton Bleeder. Oh, Bronx, or something that's like that. what it is. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. So he's the guy that is just, it was an exhibition fight, and he fights. Uh, you know, Muhammad Ali is the best fighter of all time, arguably. Fight some regular dude, some regular Joe Schmo, and everybody expects him to just beat the crap out of this guy. And the guy goes the whole distance while Muhammad Ali pounds on him. And the crowd s- switched. They started because at first they were laughing, like, oh, Muhammad Ali against this guy. But then the, ca- the crowd switched and started rooting for him. And that was the story that motivated. Uh, so I think, I Rocky. think more mm-hmm. of that story, too, if I remember correctly, I could be wrong here, but I could, I think that the promoters, the way he even got that fight was. They were, I think it was either Rocky Marciano or another, another, there was a white guy that they wanted to fight Muhammad Ali and there was no other, he was like the next best white guy yeah. available, <laughs> but he was not even, even in, in the, it should have been the next competitor to even have a shot yeah. at fighting Muhammad Ali. So he was already a crazy long shot. They just wanted to play the whole black and white card. Yeah. And so that was the whole idea of letting him even fight that fight. And then he out of, out of nowhere puts yeah. together like this amazing fight yeah. and almost wins. No, we like to see people who are, are like us. So, you know, everyday people succeed. But once people succeed and stay there... <laughs> then we want to keep them down. Yeah, and then yeah, people yeah. are like, oh, you're, you're not Take like us. So it's weak. like a bunch of piranhas so and shit. You're not me. like us anymore, that's you know what so, I mean? That's so weak to it's, me. But yeah. it's just... It's See, just I am, I'm so... It's that story, right? But you know what? That's I, I don't think that's everyone. I think there's people like... I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't like care that. for that as much. Yeah. I love to see greatness. I love mm-hmm. to see somebody who continues to persevere through yet everybody trying to knock you down. Because like just said, I agree, like staying on top is way harder than the, you know. Everybody's what, gunning for you. Right, right. Yeah. It's it's way, way tougher to the do that. The pressure just, yeah, just increases substantially yeah. with every single bout, you know, and it's, it, I don't know. I'd, so I, I, I want to see how far they can stretch, right, you know, like our abilities as human beings. That's like, how I look at it, too. You know, like I want to see how great we can get, like, Bro, who, like individually and as a team. Tom Brady is 41. How can you not want to see that guy win? Nobody's ever done the shit he's done. Who's, who, well, that's the, see, that's part like, of it. Like, how do you not want to see him win? That's true, and that's part of it because he has has this this uh symbolic weakness of age now you really like i remember watching randy couture i love oh, randy yeah. couture first off favorites. the dude's a cool the dude is just a hard worker but the reason why it's the root for him is because he was this old guy beating up on these younger dudes yep he's supposed to lose but he keeps winning so it's more like you know it makes you more excited to watch this guy kind of persevere against those kind of odds or whatever oh for sure yeah. I, I'm, and i'm just as much of a fan of him also i just think it's so amazing to see it is pretty 
guys like yeah at that at that level yeah the, the amount of work that has to go in just to maintain that body at that age 41 bro getting hit in the nfl that's <laughs> fucking next level shit bro it makes me feel like such a pussy <laughs> i know i what tore my totally? achilles all by yeah. myself all by myself <laughs> nobody was uh, around me dude playing a pickup game <laughs> like, i can't read anymore i got glasses you know oh. where'd you guys watch it were you guys at home I actually only caught the last like the of the third quarter into the fourth because I was I was flying in still from uh -huh. Seattle, so I listened to a lot of it. Like there was people that had it on their phone, on their iPad, and you know, and were streaming it. And so I was like over the shoulder looking, you know, trying mm -hmm. to. And I was like, "Fuck! Of course, it's like a great game, yeah. you know, like super epic game for for a football game." And uh, that's just the irony of it. But yeah, I did catch the last bit of it, and it was pretty fucking gripping, man. Yeah, now that you was great. were you were in Seattle, you had a because we all did trips this weekend. Yeah, man. What did yeah. you guys do? We see, we just caught up. The we did exactly what the plan was. I mean, the weather was sort of <laughs> challenging, but I it's kind of expected going into Seattle. It's not going to be like sunshine, especially and, in, and in February. seventy degrees. <laughs> yeah. So it was like we were prepared. We brought clothes for that. So it was like totally cool. It was. Uh, and we we got a place off of East Lake where we could walk and get coffee every morning and like you know check out uh, some of the nature and um, we went out a few nights to different places. I met up with my cousin lives there and I don't know if I told you but so she used to live with me for like a like five years when I was a kid and really exposed me to a lot of like really cool underground music and you know like when I was supposed to be at church she'd take me to like like you know like misfits concerts <laughs> you know and so she's like my cool family member that like I uh, would would take me to cool stuff. So I, I expected that from her. I put a lot of pressure on her. I'm like, Listen, this is your town. Like you take me out. Like like show me a good time. And so Saturday night we we hung out with her and did some fun shit. We went to all these different bars, and then she took us to some place that was like, like I guess it's a thing to have. Like I I, I felt like such an old old you know like you have like the kid section. We were supposed to go to this um, concert that was like like all ages and it was a bunch of teeny boppers and like we did we were, hold on you just said teeny boppers they're a bunch of teeny boppers <laughs> dude you know they're like they were watching some i the, use that term too yeah the, the toasters <laughs> which is like a ska punk band old school band but uh there was only like two tickets left there was like four of us so we're like ah fuck that so we ended up going to like her friend had some uh, rented some room and there's this old building that's devoted to karaoke and so like you go in there you bring your own booze and you just hang out with your friends, like 10 friends, 15 friends, and they have like a projector and like in this soundproof room, everybody's just like belting out whatever the fuck, you know, they just put on for karaoke. Even it sounds like totally lame, but it was like so much fun. And we were just rocking out. So and you like sang jumping karaoke? In rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Courtney was That's just good. like, oh my God. It was just you and you and your wife, right? Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah, we just caught out, had, had a great time just, you know, sort of being adults again and like having real conversations and, and uh, just getting away from everything. How long me. does it take you when you go on a trip? I was with just, just going to ask that same like, question. Were you? Yeah, because we get bored. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh well. That didn't happen. <laughs> that. You know, were you like, like, at first, I'm sure at first you're just, you're trying to decompress. You're just talking about the kids and stuff. Like, how long does it take before you guys are just you and her? You know what I mean? Yeah, that took a while. I mean, it the plane flight helped. So we, I mean, we were just started to kind of talk and stuff. Like she, it, she does like she's she hates flying, and so she has this like really anxious, nervous like energy like taking off. So she like grips the fuck out of my arm and almost like gives me bruises. She's like so like like wound up, and so I. <laughs> I got her some some booze, <laughs> and then she finally relaxed a little bit, and then um, yeah, and then we started to try and kind of talk a bit. We fell asleep, passed out, and then um, yeah, you finally start to kind of get past work and kid conversation, and then we're like, oh yeah, like you're a human being. I used to date you, you know, like like we used to have this sort of chemistry, and <laughs> and it's like you just need new experiences to start kind of resurrecting that you know that energy and so it took us so to important where, to where we were finally like driving this piece of shit rental car and laughing about it because it sounded like it was gonna blow up <laughs> like it sounded like i was stuck in one gear and i'm like driving on the freeway and we thought we were gonna die because it uh 
it was just struggling at, at 40 miles an hour. It's like, Nyah! and then I got to 60 and, and the whole thing started shaking. And I swear to God, I thought it was going to blow up. <laughs> where did you rent your car from? Like <laughs> bucks, bucks rent a car it's or something? It's called Payless. <laughs> I was like, honey, where the fuck did you, like, where did you get this from? What deal was this? This, this was obviously, <laughs> I've never even heard of this company. This like Mazda, whatever car was just like a, pure piece of shit like oh my god like i thought the wheels were gonna fall off now when you when you guys both travel is the, do the wives or the girls take care of the the traveling everything like flights and where well, you stay this, and all yeah, that yeah normally like i don't know i kind of help her with that on a lot of levels but like this was all her because she was doing it for my birthday as like part of a thing mm. that we we're getting away so she kind of planned the whole thing mm. <laughs> so yeah if it was up to me i was like i only do enterprise mm. you know like i'm 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 doing stuff that i know <laughs> you know it's legit. pay the extra 50 dollars. yeah right? i'll pay the extra i'm not gonna and we yeah. were like it like seriously like i was we were scared you're not doing like jose's rent a car service <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah it was totally underground there's like one person and you know <laughs> Yeah, we have a car. Takes, it's like one car available. He takes the, he takes the key for the, off his own keychain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he totally. Yeah, it was super sketchy. It was super sketchy. Yeah, no, I uh, I booked, I, I scheduled everything that we did. Since we went to Napa, we did uh, one of those resorts um, and got like spa treatment. Man, what a great spa treatment. So this place that we stayed at, the Meritage, they have a spa that's used to be what is it when it's underground and uh, cellars? Like that's where they, they would make wine the wine cellars. cellars. Yeah, yeah. kind of like that, right? So it's underground in these caves. And this room that we had had a jacuzzi. The artwork was spectacular. And it looked like a Roman. This is in your room or is this in the massage area? This is in the massage area. Okay, it's nice. in the spa area. A spa. And it was a tub. And so they let you go in the tub together and hang out. And there's bubbles and, and champagne and chocolate and whatever. And then we got a massage together. Had a great dinner. Went wine tasting the next day. Oh, here's what I did that was fucking awesome. You guys have done wine tasting before, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fun. There's a distillery in Napa now that does uh, like a tour. It's the only distillery in Napa because there was laws against them. And so now they're going to be opening up more, but there's only one currently. And it's the Napa Valley Distillery, I think it's called. So this dude comes in. So I booked it all. I had booked it all ahead of time. So we get to the resort, check in our room. And then you know me and you know me and Jessica got, our, got had a little bit of wine at the resort, and then this limo comes and picks us up, and it's this like 1985, <laughs> like old school limo, blue with blue interior, but it was pristine, so it's kind of funny. Uh, so cool. this old limo, I'm like, wait a minute, is that our limo? And it has the sign next to it. I'm like, okay, this is hilarious. So the dude comes out, and he's dressed in that kind of, I don't know what the style would be bartender steampunk kind of he's got a leather vest and he's got you know interesting facial hair and he you know hello good day or whatever and he picks us up in this really old but nice and clean now was this part of the limo the distillery in place like the that distillery okay so this wasn't like you you ordered a lump no limo the, on your the, own. so it was a tour and so what they do is they pick you up in this limo we get in and it's so funny. I'm like clicking my seatbelt and looking at the inside of the limo. I'm like, this looks like my grandfather's car. Yeah. You know, it's like, and it was like high tech for its day. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm yeah. kind of checking like, it out. We got a cell phone. It's that brick. You yeah. Know? Like, so he drives us to the distillery <clears throat> and he's going through and explaining the, distil the distillation process, which was fascinating. He's explaining the science. He's like the most knowledgeable person about spirits that I've ever met in my entire life. Then they take us upstairs and they're having us taste all these different uh, liquors and he's telling us about the regulations and rules and laws that exist in alcohol that prevent you from naming alcohols a particular name unless they're made a particular way or they're from a, a specific region, which I did not know. Hmm. So he's like, this is, this is a vodka, but we can't call it a vodka because of this, this, and this. it's like ridiculous. I had no idea there were so many laws to protect makers of alcohol. So instead of naming it a vodka, they'd name it something else. Or this is a gin, but instead of a, naming it a gin, we had to name it something else. Or It was really cool. So oh, that's like, interesting. Is, yeah. So And then there's this technique when you drink hard liquors that I did not understand. So Breathing? You know, yes. <sighs> yeah, I know that. Fucking didn't know that. My buddy, when we were in high school, taught me that. And we used to do it in high school forever. And you don't even taste the hard liquor going so, down. So when, you, so when you drink hard liquor, <laughs> first of all- Oh my God, you just brought me back to an bro, old memory So first right of all, he says, you're not supposed to like- leave it on your palate like like wine. Like you yeah. sip it and swallow it. And then he says the burn that you feel is when oxygen 
combines with something that's coming off of the alcohol that caught that it burns. So he said, what you do is you breathe in, hold your breath, swallow, and then breathe out your mouth right after you swallow. And you'll breathe out that, uh, you're breathing out CO2. So that prevents that reaction from happening. So you don't get the burn, but then you still taste the liquor. I like the burn. So I fucking, <laughs> fucking, no pussies, man, it's that aftershave. <laughs> so I, no, it warms you up, dude. I, for the first time in my life, time. enjoyed the flavor yeah. ever. I've never mm. enjoyed the flavor of liquor. So I, and I actually bought some. So right. it was a great time. And the next day we did wine tasting and all that stuff, but we had a good time. But I did come back with a bottle of their brand of gin or whatever, which wow. is really fucking good. Gin, huh? I yeah. really enjoyed it, yeah. Interesting, dude. Is that like an old mm. man drink? Who drinks gin? Yeah, yeah, gin's kind of an old man drink. I mean, if you get a gin and tonic, obviously, but like a, a or like a martinis, you know, there's that's kind of an old man status, dude, when you start getting into <laughs> okay. martinis So I'm not going to look like a dork. No, you're good. Okay, Gin, cool. Gin's yeah, yeah. good. Gin's cool. Yeah. Because yeah. ordering watermelon mojitos at the bars. <laughs> now that's something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get made fun of all yeah, the time. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. If you're drinking, that reminds me of. Uh, uh, remember Scrubs? He'd always order those apple teenies. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. When the, right. If you yeah. if your if your drink comes with an girly. umbrella, bro, that's yeah, not cool. Okay, that's, cool. That's not. Well, cool. I found something now. That, that's <laughs> we actually we actually were uh, this place that we stayed. Um, we sat down at the bar. We went to we went to dinner like an hour or half hour, forty five minutes before our, our reservation, something like that. And we're like, oh, let's just go sit. In the, we'll sit at the bar. We never go sit at the bar and just have a drink. We're not big. I'm not a big drinker. Katrina loves a drink. And uh, you know, this place is a really fancy place. So the bartender back there, uh, very educated, been a bartender for I think fifteen years or more with that. And all kinds of fancy drinks. I, I saw. I took a picture. I don't know if you guys saw the picture, but I couldn't even tell you the name of the two drinks that we made. The stuff that I mean, he was using like this um, uh, real blueberries that were like smashed up inside the drink that he was he was shaking up and that would create like this nice pulp over it. So the drink I had was like a, a blueberry, and I'm sure there's someone on our forum that knows this stuff. So I'm, I'll, I'll get the forum will be all over this. But it, he, it was like an old fashioned meets like this blueberry drink, hmm. and he, he he asked me if I had ever had a, a Negoni, a Nergoni, Nerg, Negoni. You ever heard of that? Before? Negroni, Negroni. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. So yeah, it, that wasn't that. the name of the drink, but he asked me if I ever had that because there were some similarities to that drink to what he made because he made me mm. this custom one. But we went to yeah, I got it, Negro, Negroni. Is that what it is? Yeah. So. What what do you say? Oh, Dustin? go ahead. No. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So th- is that was not the drink, uh, mm-hmm. but he asked me when he was making the drink. He's oh, you ever had a Negroni? And I was like, no. But he's like, this is kind of like that, but we're gonna put our own little twist on it. So he he created look good. He created this with a with a blueberry blueberry twist to it. It was really fucking good. It was yeah. good. We had a we had a couple of those. Dude, no, that right? reminds me just because like uh, when we went out to pregame before we went out, there was we found this in, in near Pike's place. There was there's a place that devoted just to Moscow mules. It was like all um, the entire place was about. Um, uh, whatever the ginger beer that they were selling there. And so they had a lot of different variations of that, but it was just like on tap. I was like, Moscow mules on tap. Oh dear, this is amazing. Yeah. And it was really good. Oh, and really? I thought you guys would appreciate it. Yeah. If we went there. So yeah, I was having some interesting thoughts while I was gone in, uh, cause I was thinking about, um, I, cause I noticed when, when we're on vacation, when we're well rested, when we're feeling healthy, when we're taking care of ourselves, uh, you know, Jessica and I just, we sync up so well. Like everything seems to match. If I'm deficient in one area, she seems to be stronger in that area and, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Our uh, you know, our libidos tend to match, whether they're both high or both lower. It's not one or the other. Um, there's lots of things start to sync up. And I was really thinking about this and just realizing that, you know, when couples really take care of themselves, it's so much more likely that they're going to be able to get along and kind of work together because everything that you do, you got to go through this kind of filter of your body. And if your health is off, if it's thrown off because you're not eating right, you're not getting good sleep, if you're stre- you know, in all these all these other factors are on top of you, it's very hard for you to like you're not you're not talking necessarily to the person anymore, you're talking to all this other shit that's coming out. And that's why you get so many, that's why sometimes it's so hard to connect mm-hmm. with people. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And, and health is a big, I think if, if couples were just physically healthy, I bet you, it would cut a lot of their problems out just from that. I don't think it would eliminate problems, but their ability to deal with problems 
would be so much easier. You know? Health and financial stability tend to be, in mm-hmm. my opinion, two of the biggest things that cause major stress in people's life. Being unhealthy or un- financially unstable, to, at least in my experience, the relationships that I've been around and seen and been in myself, those two things <clears throat> are the biggest factors of, I feel like, the synergy of the relationship. Like if both people are healthy, both people are pretty much financially stable. There tends not to be a lot of stress on the relationship. Throw in one of those factors, or in some cases, what happens to a lot of people, both factors where there is instability with health-wise and instability financially, and you've just got to... Sh- and then expecting a relationship to thrive and grow and be healthy in that is pretty fucking tough. Man. It's hard, yeah. but if you think about it, let's extend it even further. If your health is bad... And it's pretty hard to disagree that that won't affect your partner, your relationship with your partner. Like if you're both unhealthy, it's going to be harder to have a good, cohesive, strong relationship. Um, Now extend that even further. If your health is poor, your relationships with your kid, with your kids may be more difficult. Your relationships now with people around you may be more difficult. Your relationships with your coworkers, your business. I mean, really, if you're you're if you're in this body and you're moving around in this body. Um, and that's your vehicle or whatever. If you really, if you don't take care of it, I mean, it's like driving a car with dirty windows. You know, you can't see what's in front of you. You, you know, it's, it's it's this filter, and it makes everything much more difficult. So, in this way, and it, it, it sounds so like religious, right? But you know, health and fitness are so important for everything, not just for your physical health and fitness. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I know when I have poor sleep and I'm not feeling good, I'm just way less reasonable. Yeah, I'm just way less reasonable, and I can identify it. Yeah. I can identify it while I'm sick, and after I'm sick, but I, I or, or you know after I'm you know uh, my health is better. But staying in that poor health state, the longer you stay in it, the less the the harder it is to recognize that that's the reason why shit isn't working for you. Yeah, I mean it, you it know? was very evident because we just went through a spell of of like have had the flu and then my two boys had the flu and so like we just like i just started to get over it and then we we took this trip together and like somehow courtney made made it out without getting sick but um yeah like seeing the energy shift like immediately and like um yeah i i know that i i could be you know hard to deal with if i'm going through that on top of like trying to you know manage everything that we have to manage like constantly and uh, so, yeah, it's man, when, when your health and, and, and you're, you're well rested and it makes such a massive difference, like on just the conversations you have and like the energy and demeanor you have, uh, you know, in your household, it's 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 crucial. It's what, do just, you, what do you think is bigger? Do you think health or do you think that financial stability for people? What do you think causes more r- stress? That's in a another relationship? big one. Yeah, they're both huge. You know, I feel like. I mean, I feel like they, they're connected, right? Because one can lead to the other. Like if you have poor financial health, that can cause lots of stress, which can motivate poor eating, which could prevent you from being active and taking care of your body. And then vice versa. If, you're really, if your health is poor physically, the obvious, right? It's more expensive. Um, so you're gonna, it's going to cost you more money. But then the not so obvious, uh, the decisions that you tend to make when you're not feeling optimal when you're feeling unhealthy or irritable or negative, um, you may make worse decisions financially. You may buy shit as a way to, to temporarily to make yourself with it. feel yeah. better. Totally, mm-hmm. you know. And so it's one of those. And the reason why this is it was just something I was thinking about is, you know, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about this whole, you know, how se- sometimes people think it's so selfish to take care of yourself. They'll say, you know, no, no, you get all these other things to take care of. Don't spend time on taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. The irony of it is when you do take care of yourself in a real, in the truest sense, not just spoil yourself or whatever, but really take care of yourself, that you're going to be better, you'll be uh, better able to take care of other things and the things around you. 100%, 100%. You know, so it's almost like because that's the easiest thing that's in your control, because if you think of all the things in your life that you can influence, taking care, how you take care of yourself is the easiest or at least the thing you have the most control over. Maybe not the easiest because it's not easy sometimes, but it's e- it's simple in the sense that that is directly in my control. Like you're not in my control directly, but I'm directly in my control. And so it makes sense to tackle that first. You know what I mean? So if you look at your life and all the shit around you, you look at your spouse and you're like, oh my God, we have a terrible relationship. Or you look at your business or, oh my God, I'm doing horrible in, work, in business. Like if you just take care of yourself, clean your own room, that's going to have a yeah. lot of effect on everything else. And 
it's pretty crazy. I was just, you know, I was thinking about that because it's like, here we are, we go on this trip, we're rested, relaxed, you know, we're healthy. And it's like, man, we're so in sync, Mm -hmm. you know, with everything. And I feel like we can handle so many obstacles when we both feel good Mm -hmm. versus when we feel bad. I feel like the smallest obstacles just, they're so hard to take care of when you feel like shit. So I agree. Yep. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Maddie Lee 217 In your opinion, how important are all natural products for your body, such as deodorant, face wash, toothpaste, etc.? As a struggling college student, I constantly switch between wanting to make sure I do well by my body and wanting to save money. Now, this is a this is a cool mm. question because I feel like uh, this is a lot of the thought process that I went through in the, the like the previous I think ten years or so of like. You know, oh, I know this would be more ideal for my body to take this in or do this. But then, you know, you go into some of these places uh, that are all natural, organic, and the prices are just outrageous. And then I ask myself, like, you know, there's so many other parts of my life that I need to clean up and get better before I spend triple the amount on my shampoo or Mm -hmm. my soap or whatever. But things are starting to change. Yeah. Yeah, the well, tide's turning, and I mean, we've seen that with Thrive Market, and this is one of the things I've actually gotten a conversation about this specifically because I I brought the Dr. Broner's like toothpaste and like the soaps and all this kind of stuff, and I never would have really considered, um, you know, like trying to get these types of products because of that fact that it was like it's super expensive. What's the point? You know, it's like not really affecting me that much. Right. But once I started to kind of like go in that direction. And, you know, having something that's a little more affordable now, like, you know, you can like opt into this and like get deals on, on good product, good natural products. Like it, it's a no brainer to me. It's just like one less thing that my body has to right. be exposed to. So, yeah, it's, it's, so there's a couple of things that come up for me when I hear stuff like this. The first is when I hear people say it's too expensive and I want to save money um, and I'm not, uh, judging your priorities. Okay. Um, I just, you have to be honest about your priorities because I hear people say this and then the same college student. Yeah. Friday go, night goes out and has seven beers. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and they've got their iPhone. With Dude, all, you know, it was happy hour. You yeah. know, they're paying their phone bill and they're, you know, they're spending money on gas and driving super far and doing all these different things. And, you know, so it's, it, you got to question that like, okay, is it really a money issue? Is it just that you, you don't value it as much as you pretend to. Well, that's really the, I, I, it's that's, the cost. It's the cost be- benefit ratio. So I get it. Even as a college student, like, and we're joking about the seven drinks Friday night or going somewhere, but she may value those things in her life and those experiences at that time in her life more than she does saving or you know spending five to twenty more dollars on her health products. So I could I could understand I could understand that to a point. Like there's still the cost benefit ratio that you have to kind of yeah. go through your head you know so i get where you're going with that but i also understand where she could potentially be weighing this out the truth is though that like with companies like thrive market it, it those they've they got rid of those margins yeah the prices are yeah, the prices are almost they're the same. competitive yeah, yeah they're, they're the absolutely same. competitive competitive to the point where they're actually better than some mm-hmm. whole you know some regular products that you would buy at safeway so you know, if you're not using Thrive Market, that in itself is enough reason just for that. Because even if you don't shop all of your groceries through Thrive, a handful of products like the ones you're naming, face wash, toothpaste. That's what they. Or, that's the best things I think. Right, you buy there right. From yeah, there. you can you can pay for uh, their products through them and spend the same or less mm-hmm. than what you would at Safeway for products that have got a bunch the, of shit. The, in them. the problem with these um, cosmetic <laughs> products or toothpaste and deodorants and that kind of stuff is we don't quite know how big of an impact they're having on us because there's so much stuff that we use. Too many other variables. Yeah, Yeah, so we could test like one, like just deodorant, but then when you combine that with everything else that you're doing, and then who knows what's going on. And there are chemicals in them that do seem to have estrogenic effects on people. And we can speculate and say, hey, look, you know, men's testosterone levels have dropped, you know, considerably over the last 30 years. Sperm counts have dropped considerably over the last 30 years. You know, girls are going through puberty earlier 
um, you know, than they have uh, over the last 30 years. I mean, all these different things are happening. Is it, we know it's got to be environmental, but how much of it is diet? How much of it is mm-hmm. cosmetic products? How much of it is inactivity? Uh, you know, and is it, ju- you know, it's obviously the perfect co- yeah, cocktail of like all those things at once. You know, if you were to eliminate some it of these is. toxins, it's like, you know, your whole body is, is, as a whole would, would benefit. Here's the way I look at it. Uh, when it comes to food. So let's say you, you like chocolate and you know, chocolate isn't ideal for you, but you also enjoy eating it and it's something you really enjoy, you know, partaking in. So once, you know, every couple weeks you have some chocolate. Um, that's a, you know, that's a kind of a measured approach, but here's the problem with like, you know, deodorant and toothpaste and hairspray and stuff like that. There, you use them every day. So deodorant, I'm going to be using every day, probably since I'm 13 or 14 until maybe the day I die or until I stop giving a fuck. I'm going to be wearing, I'm sure once one point when you, at some point when you get older, you're like, I don't care anymore, but <laughs> you know, you wear that shit every single day, day right. in and day out. Right, right. So you have to add that in too. You have to factor it in too. So although the deodorant may not have as big of a dramatic effect as let's say a piece of chocolate will, you're using it every single day, day in and day out. And if it contains something like an aluminum over the course of, you know, 10 years, 15 years, what, what can that build up in the system? Some people say yes. Some studies will say yes. So I, I mean, and the skin is like an organ like anything else. It's yeah. permeable. It does absorb things. So for me personally, this is pretty important to me. I use these things every single day. It's a it's a priority. I, I I and it's not like that big of a difference for me if I brush my teeth with the natural toothpaste versus the other one. Deodorants. I've heard some people say the natural ones aren't as effective, but I've found some that are really good that that re- work really well. You're probably not going to find a really good natural antiperspirant. In which case, though, the argument can be made: Why are you trying to stop your armpits from sweating in the first place? That might not be a smart thing anyway. Um, you know, so, and there's other things that, you know, go into that. So, um, I think they're pretty important, especially cause you use them on a daily basis. Use thrive market. These are things you buy anyway, go on thrive market. I know we have a promo with them that will pretty much, you know, nullify the cost of the membership. Anyway, you'll be able to get these products for the same price. You'll get them at the, uh, you know, their, their non-natural counterparts at the store and then you should be okay. And then again, as far as saving money is concerned, the, the other point that I was making is, priorities like if you are spending money on going out to get a bunch of drinks and you're wondering about buying you know these cosmetic products you could also just not drink as much you do save money but the alcohol is going to affect your your health way worse yeah so that's going to be better for your health invest anyway. in your health yeah because I mean, the it, end of the day that's the point i was going to make well is, that's kind of how kid, i that's you know, how i feel i yeah. feel like if you're you know when there's certain things that i'm doing and i am very aware of that i do, don't belong in my diet or they're not serving my body that are bigger rocks I tend to address them first before I go out and spend any extra money or even just any extra effort yeah. into getting something like that. So I would, you know, if you're if you're already looking into doing things that are healthier for body, you got to really Dude, look at best the rest thing, of your day. Best thing you can do if you're a college student, I can pretty much guarantee you, is focus on good sleep because I guarantee that's probably one of the worst things mm-hmm. that college students have is is sleep. Get good sleep. That'll affect your health way more than anything else. And it's free. Next question is from Looney Moment. Individually and as a human race, we always think that we currently have our shit figured out. Then years, decades, or centuries later, we realize many things we used to do or think were just plain stupid. Any (laughs) speculation of what you might be doing now that might be wrong later, both individually and collectively as a species? This is a very funny Uh, and interesting question mm -hmm. for us to try and speculate (laughs) on. First of all, I think the things that... um, that have been around for centuries or that we continue to do. Uh, you know, I think those things like massage therapy, for example, like I've, they've kind of proven themselves, haven't they? Right. Like I think that that's been around forever. I'm, uh, I'm a huge fan of incorporating that into your health, wellness, lifestyle, whatever you want to call it. Like, I, I think it's something that you should regularly do if you can afford to do it. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of things that, may not make that big of a deal. I mean, the float tank, that's been around for quite a long time, and that's something that we've incorporated recently that could we could find out later on that that was a waste of time, really. I don't know. Like, I just It's, it's, it's tough to say what we're doing right now. It's funny because when we think of evolution, we think of uh, biology, the biological evolution, right? So, like, humans mm-hmm. evolved a particular way to have particular features because it's beneficial for our survival, and nobody will debate that. 
but you bring up an ancient, uh, you know, technique for health <coughs> or an ancient <coughs> ritual or something that's in religion that's been around for thousands of years that they say is good for your health. And scientists or, you know, modern humans will question it and say how silly it is, not realizing that that is a form of evolution. If something lasts for thousands of years throughout cultures and, and religions, and I'll give you an example in just a second, if something has existed that long across cultures, uh, you know, for thousands of years or even millennia, then it probably has got benefit. There's a reason why it lasted so long. There's a reason why cultures continue to do certain things. Right. And uh, one example is fasting, okay? So, and I love using fasting because 15, 20 years ago, if I talked about the health benefits of fasting in any health circle, any health circle that was modern, so the doctor, dietitians, personal trainers, fitness, whatever, anywhere 20 years ago, if I said fasting is very good for you, I would be laughed at. They would have laughed at me. They would have said, you're stupid. That's baloney. And yet, fasting exists in every major religion. So, and religions were, for, you know, for all intents and purposes, that was ways of living and they existed the way they did because they worked, because that's why they lasted so long. They existed in every ancient culture in some form. Philosophers wrote about them, and yet we were so easy to write it off. Right. So I think those things tend to stand the, the, the test of time. Yeah. What we have today with modern applications is we don't have the test of time. So we end up figuring out shit that we think is awesome is bad pretty fucking quickly. So like antibiotics and the way we used to just mm -hmm. willy-nilly just prescribe them. Like right. Vitamins. Yeah, yeah now we're figuring out, oh, fuck, we fucked this, up. Not we've a good created thing. super viruses, you know, yeah. from doing all super that. Bacteria. Super what bacteria. What about other stuff? Okay, so... Well, um, yeah, no, I was also thinking in terms of like, uh, I guess I'm very optimistic in, in this regard, but um, thinking about like Western medicine practices and how I feel like a lot of our over prescribing, like you're sort of alluding to, but like, you know, even for blood pressure and for um, things that, you know, we can manage within our own pre preventative health practices, I feel at, at some point because of all the data and all the initiatives, um, you know, all this, this information that's out there that, um, th there's going to be a lot more, um, you know, like clinics and things devoted around preventative practice versus it's going to be scoffed at if like, you're just taking a pill for it. Like you're being lazy about like, you know, treating yourself. So I got something for you guys that the, so right now we're all going like biology direction, right? Mm -hmm. And human evolution. What about like things that we're doing right now or using tech wise that I think we're going to look at and laugh at in the years. I think what I, I think this whole staring at our cell phone and computer or tablet all day long is going to, we're going to evolve beyond that and think what the fuck were we thinking for a, a gap there? Hmm. We were all glued to this electronical tool it is silly. that started to fuck our posture up, that started to fucking create bad habits and routines, destroy relationships. I think that because there's so much positive stuff that we talk about with tech and the evolution of that, that we are, haven't seen the backlash of what's happening. I think books like The Irresistible, which everyone's heard me talk about a million times, I think things like that are starting to surface and come out and we're going to see more of that. And I think the future me will look back at the me right now and go like, what the fuck are you doing? What are they going to replace that with? Glued to your... I think it'll, it'll be... Yeah. yeah. It'll be gone. Hands well, free. Okay, yeah. So I think, it, you know, just my own, like, speculation is that, you know, with this augmented reality that they're working on, I think that you're going to interact with your environment more than you're going to have a device. So, like, walls, you'll be able to... At whatever point, you'll be able to kind of, like, use it as a screen you know, and just be able to see things and interact with it and like with your hands or, um, you know, a surface, there'll be more surfaces devoted to, um, Any you know, surface. technology as opposed to like, I have to have this thing constantly, like I'm a slave to this phone, uh, and looking down and my posture and all this yeah. shit's affected. Well, the question is that, well, that, uh, that's just becoming more plugged in. Right. So I, I think, yeah, I just don't think it's going to stop. I speculated on a podcast just when we were up in, in, uh, on it that I really think they're, we're going to, in the future, have this division of people. Uh, like, you're going to have the plugged in, and you're going to have the unplugged. I really believe the tech that. Amish. Right, because I think there's <laughs> there, there's some people that aren't afraid of that, that just think that that's the future, is we're getting closer to the player one type of mentality, or that we're going to be all like surrogates, where we're plugged in and doing this augmented and virtual reality, and that's going to be the future, and there's going to be businesses built around that. 
then I think there's going to be the counter or the revolt to that, right? The rebellion to that, which will be the people that are like, listen, we've survived for thousands of years to now without all this stuff. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. It's unnecessary and arguably unhealthy, not only for our bodies, our minds, and and possibly our relationships. Mm. So I think there's going to be a lot of, Mm. I mean, if you try and take yourself, right, detach and, and look at yourself and think of like some of these days where, you know, I do, I catch myself rounded over staring at my phone for sometimes hours at a time and i know that i've got to be pretty close to the norm of people that use these tools and i see it getting accelerating at a very fast rate it was only a few years back where it was rare to see somebody holding a phone everybody now yeah everywhere everywhere everybody so i think they're going to view i think we'll look at tech uh so what's happened with tech reminds me of any time we have a new innovation we overdo it and then we start to realize that we mm-hmm. need to temper it. Start scare, scaling down. Because yeah. here's the thing about humans. Humans have, we're different than animals in the sense that we we understand that we need to control ourselves in particular ways. So like if you just put endless supplies of food in front of you know, wild animals, many of them will kill themselves by continuing to eat, eat, eat. Humans, we started to do that with processed foods, yeah. easy access to foods. Like here you go, everybody, here's all this processed easy food and we're just like, cool. We just started. Now we're starting to look back and go, "Oh shit, we need to temper ourselves. We need to we need to look at our food and start to pay attention to what we eat because this is something that we need to control." I think tech is the same way. I think same thing with antibiotics or anything else like we just talked about. We've got all this tech in front of us. We're just you know gorging ourselves with technology, mm-hmm. and I think in the future we're going to be like, "Oh no, you need to structure your time that you use it. You need to structure time that you're off of it, and it needs to be a part of your." lifestyle, just like now a days versus 200 years ago, you need to structure your diet. You know, 200 years ago, it was basically eat what you had because yeah. that was it. And you might over, not get anything. Well, it's, it, yeah. there's a strong, and, and I 100% agree, there's going to be a split and a division with those two camps because there's still going to be a very strong camp that wants to innovate by all means necessary. Absolutely. And like- amoral, whatever, you know, directions they go with it, it, it's going to keep moving in that direction. And um, this is going to be one of those things where it's going to challenge humanity. So so that's where I think, that's the big thing that I think is going to happen. And hopefully we get to this point. So the 20th century saw the largest reduction in world poverty that that humanity ever seen ever. Like more, we saw more advancements in terms of reducing the world's, you know, poverty in the 20th century and then we saw in the previous you know millennia of human civilization from 1990 to 2010 alone we cut uh, a one we, one billion people were lifted out of poverty just in that period of time and we're seeing a and this is largely due to the freeing up of world markets you had the fall of the Soviet Union you had opening up of markets you had communist countries like China adopt lots of free market policies so now distribution is better innovation is better more people are fed more people have opportunity to create wealth and so we're seeing this huge reduction in poverty and for all intents and purposes we maybe even in our lifetime we'll see a point where where poverty will be rare in the world and it might happen in our lifetime literally in the next you know if we live old enough we may see that happen you know, by the time we're 70 or 80, where... Really, you think that poverty, you, we're going to see that? It's happened that fast. We took, remember, a billion people from 1990 to 2010 went from world's poverty out. That's crazy. We, we So the World Health Org, I think but it was... The, can't you also argue during that same time we saw the, our population grow more than it's ever grown to? It should have made it even harder, right? We still had more people. It, we still had more people to feed. Like, by, for, again, for all intents and purposes, we should have had more people in poverty. We actually had less. And we had countries like China, dramatic reductions in poverty. Of course, the U.S. was already kicking ass. You had all these emerging markets. My point is, what I think may happen in the future, and I'm hope I hope I'm alive to see this. Uh, I hope I'm you know I live long enough to see this, but maybe it'll happen next generation or so, where we will see people are going to get what they want, where it, money isn't really a big issue. People kind of have what they want, and then people are going to realize that that's not the answer. I think that'll be a huge paradigm oh my God. You shattering. Think I think. Well, look. Wow. You've got wealthy, you know, wealthy countries where poverty, you know, uh, relative poverty kind of doesn't exist that much in countries like, you know, in Western societies where people don't really starve. You know, of course we have poverty, but it's not a major horrible thing. Most people have what they need, have food, have shelter, all those different things. 
and yet we have mental illness going through the roof. We have, you know, uh, people are not as happy. And we know this in studies. We know that once people have, and there was a number they actually came up with, I think it was over $75,000 a year in America. Once you make more than that, you really don't see any increase in happiness. We have studies on lottery winners. We talked about this on the recent episode where people will win the lottery and for a year they'll be happier. And then after that, they're right back down to their baseline. I think we're going to see a world where because the whole world is starting to lift itself out of this state where people start to get what they want, they're going to, we're going to realize this isn't everything. Like I thought this was everything. And now that, you know, I have food, shelter, all these, we have all these other problems. We're not fulfilled. We don't have any purpose. We don't feel good. And I feel like that will be a huge paradigm shattering moment. We're starting to see it here in America, right? You're starting to see it now with people where well, it, people are buying more and more shit that an, we're like, this isn't helping. It's an interesting theory because, I mean, I do subscribe to the, you know, Tom Bilyeu statement of that anything that can be free will be free in the future. And I, I think we see that in our space already, like just as far as information and knowledge. I mean, in the past, you, the, the goal was to hold on to all that and then sell it and monetize it where now it's like, providing, you know, these people are providing so much information for free. Uh, yeah, you know, and then when you think of 3D printers and where that's going, what that potentially can lead to, like, you, if you have the ability to print whatever the fuck you want, if you own one of those, then what's the need of going, saving all your money and working so hard to go and, you know, buy this expensive toy that you can now 3D print whenever you want, you know, so. 3D print your own medications, you know, you'll have self-driving cars. I mean, of course, we're talking way in the future, but the cost of, of, of oh, owning a car will be so much more expensive. Do you guys see? Do you guys that. see the um, the taxis that the that they're trying to do? The company is called. Let me give the I'll give you the name of the company that's doing this right now. I thought this was really are they doing self driving taxis. Where are they so, located? So it's a flying taxi. What? Yes, and it's already got a hundred million in funding. So it's a five seat electric taxi. Uh, that's it's kind of like a cross between a drone and a small plane. And there's uh, Boeing, Uber, and Google are all heavily in this space right now as far as the race to getting this this thing done. It's back to the future, too. This company is called uh, Jobby Aviation. It's a flying taxi. So Jobby a- Aviation is the name of the company that's well, doing this. There you go. There there, you go. There's a lot of regulation they're gonna ha- and hurdle they're going to have to get through. How crazy is, could that be? That's going to be so Yeah, because, I mean, they're going to have to have flight patterns all established, like zones, like all that kind Do of you stuff. Because they can get, like, I mean, something that's that small that you can man and, and like, think about, like, how maneuverable, like, landscape's going to be. Well, dude, if self-driving anything is going to complete people don't realize how big of a disruptor that's that will the be. jetsons bro it's like yeah. the closest thing yeah, to the yeah. jetsons we yeah, didn't yeah. Ha- we, the jetsons thing like had it really close dude <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> but it'll be such a huge disruptor because uh societies are designed around the car yeah you have a garage which is a shit ton of space in your home devoted to parking you have roads which take up a lot of space parking spaces time wasted in traffic yep. the, in, the the productivity you lose from driving you know the car accidents, the death, the cost that that costs. Imagine, imagine if be crazy. imagine if we no longer even want or need cars, and your you your won't. space in your house now is the, another room, and then your driveway becomes a landing pad for your fucking your taxis. Bro, here. why would you put yeah. it the, put, put it this way? So they've done some estimates, and who knows what they'll still actually cost? But I've actually read article, articles where they say that they estimate that driving to work and going where you want oh, to go I've seen, I've seen will cost you something like $2,000 a year. Right. Uh, and they're, ab- they're already able to pay for that. You could do like a service where you pay $2,000 a year and you'd have access to- Do the able- math. Yeah. Do the math. $2,000 a year versus owning a car, paying insurance, and buying gas. You can't tell me that most people aren't going to be like, fuck that, I'm doing that. Now think of kids taking them places. Think of the productivity. Think of when you're in your car- Think of the inside of the car. The inside of a car is designed around the driver. Right. But when you're no longer the driver, well, now it's an office. Let's get yeah. in the car, guys. It's Oh, let's continue our work or whatever. Traffic. I mean, it's going to revolutionize and change everything. So, I mean, that's just one of the, that's just one of the inventions that I think there will be a point like, like, I'll give you like a like a pie in the sky crazy. Oh, that's something that I think we're doing right now that some, we're going to laugh at in the future. I think driving is going to be something that we're laughed at. Oh, yeah. I think that's going <laughs> to people are going to look at that like how wait, dangerous. I can't believe yeah, you did that. How dangerous? How stupid? You could have been learning for that hour while you were driving yeah. or accomplishing work. Like it's so not productive. <laughs> then you will have the people that go buy a Corvair just to be an asshole. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> but they'll have to drive on like. <laughs> it's like but you they, know, chances are it might blow up. But they know? can't drive on a road. It'll be like no. when you own a horse. Like. I 
I can't ride my horse on the road anymore. It's illegal. I have to go to a place where it's dedicated to horses. So you'll have your own electric like yeah. car. I believe totally. you're right. It'll be like, like that. tracks. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah you like, have to go oh, to I'm a track to go track. drive your old old you know Camaro and whip it around the track. For yeah, sure. it's uh, it's it's an interesting. Hopefully, my shit will be with hell but, of money coming. Oh, that time. But let me paint. Let me paint the future. Let's That'd say be fun, though. let's say artificial intelligence is invented. Let's say machines do all of our hard work for us. We're in the future. Machines do almost everything for us. Now all we, we have to all, do is think. We all just get to do kind of what we want. You know, we're free. There's lots of money because everything's so efficient and labor's done by by machines by us for us. I bet you will, that'll be a paradigm destroying moment for us. Like we're gonna be like, okay, why am I still depressed? Man, what does that look like? Yeah, the, why am I still sad? Why do I still? The question might be is, will it drive more depression, dude? I think. Yeah, yeah, it, like less purpose. Bro, right. When you don't. Purpose comes from. Think about it this way. We know this because we're in fitness. Imagine if people could snap their fingers and just make themselves fit and healthy. Would it mean nearly the same amount no way. as if they had to work for it and the process discipline? Is and everything. The process everything. No. Everything. It's everything. That's why I think, and it, I mean, humanity in itself, we're always looking for the challenge. And that's why I think that it, it does make sense that even, it's just so stupid that we want to go like colonize Mars. Like, why? You know, <laughs> like, why do we want to do that? Because we need purpose. We need purpose. We yeah. need something that drives us that's like super hard, that it feels like it's impossible, but we can tackle this. What do you guys think about like supplementation too? I think like maybe in the future, supplements will be like so perfect for you genetic like, like so well no just even to like to be able to assess you like if there was ability to be able to track like all the things that i eat on a regular basis which we we already have stuff to track these types of things that go back and say on a very regular basis adam you lack in vitamin this vitamin that it'll be you, daily right and it's just this, yeah. this daily supplement that's made for me you wake up in the morning you poop pee give a little drop of blood and it's like dee, 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 dee. here's yeah. your yes. supplement for today right yeah, yeah. I think you had pizza yesterday. Therefore, you need. I think Organifi is working on this already. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why we. I think that's why we signed with them, right? I think, I think uh, they're on the cutting edge of uh, of a uh, health and fitness yeah, supplement. They got nanotechnology. Dude, in there. I, w- I will say Organifi is one of the only supplements I travel with consistently. I, I, the green juice is I fucking too, great, man. man. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only thing I actually on the take regular. with me. Do you guys do the same thing? Yeah. 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 No, we, we we had it this weekend. We were in Bernardis and we were uh, living out of the hotel every every meal for me this trip was in the hotel room so we didn't uh, other than that or go out to the restaurant so i never even left the, the premises there and whenever i do that i don't get enough of my greens so it's like a staple thing that we we take everywhere we go so yeah. did you guys uh so did you guys eat healthy or what um somewhat i mean i i had the first night that i was there i had the filet and Brussels sprouts, but the Brussels, oh my god the Brussels sprouts were fried so again fried Brussels sprouts this is twice now Brussels we've- sprouts is in style it is. It's a I, thing now. I feel like it is. Too. You know what's it's funny? Never seen it. For all you, for all you kids that are like twenty years old and younger listening right now, let me yeah, tell you something about Brussels they have sprouts. No idea. You have no idea the fucking crazy <laughs> the turnaround. Stigma. Yeah. The crazy turnaround. Brussels sprouts. Whoever's in charge of the marketing for Brussels they're sprouts, killing it. Is brilliant. Yeah, because they're killing it right now. When we were kids, if you were going to talk about a gross food, yeah. the food that you would use to exemplify that was Brussels sprouts. All right, here's a prediction. Lima beans. Lima beans are gonna they're be- going to resurrect that shit somehow. I mean, if they can do this with Brussels sprouts, <laughs> dude, think about it. How did they do that? That I have was no the, idea. That was the gross so food. fucking good. I got crave it all the time. These were amazing, man. They had the, the food there was just off the charts. So I didn't. I, I ate pretty good. The breakfast one morning, I had a, um, a frittata. So it spinach it had spinach, kale, um, eggs, and dude, I had a, I had a burger. I, I had a the, burger one yeah, day, I so I did either. I did crush a burger. The place I ate at was uh, Farmstead in St. Helena. They had a burger that was... I've never had to eat a burger like this. I had to open it up and I use a fork it. and knife. The egg and the avocado. It was oh, fucking so egg in there and bacon and avocado. Oh, and it was just... Oh, yeah. my God. It was so... Oh, here's another Delicious. thing, too. That I had some this morning, too, by the way. Have you guys ever had... Um, oh, now I can't remember. Death Wish coffee? Yeah. I haven't had it. I've when seen it. I haven't had it. Is uh, it strong? Fuck yeah, it is, bro. Sweet. So I drank my normal amount. Oh, you bet your ass, yeah. sir. The, so this morning I had half the amount that I normally have because I learned my lesson. The morning we went to Napa, I, I know in the, bot, the it says it's really strong. They name it Death Wish. So I'm like, yeah. okay, but that's probably you know marketing. I mean, how much stronger can they make a natural <laughs> coffee bean? So I had my normal amount, and I was fucking – I was beyond stimulated. It was like – 
too a little too much. I almost had an anxiety attack driving a nap. <laughs> I was in the car. Like and I was short like, of breath. Yeah, I'm a little like, bit. I'm like, why do I feel like I'm running? I'm driving <laughs> somewhere right now. That shit. Have you had it yet? Adam? I have it. It's at my house. It's it's my go to when I'm at a Chimera. Oh mm. yeah, it's my go to. It's not my favorite tasting. And there's other coffees that I like. That I'm, I actually like the taste. Yeah, it's all right. It's good. It's not. It's not. I mean, I don't think Chimera is the best tasting coffee either. Like I, it, I drink Chimera because it, the way I feel from it, it just. Yeah. I definitely have have noticed a significant difference with that coffee than I have with any other coffee with the, the crash. Like it's inevitable. Almost every other coffee that I, even the ones I really enjoy the taste, that there's this kind of Dude, dip afterwards. Seattle. Amazing coffee. Oh, that's, that's like, a lot of nitro like, coffee. Duh. Yeah, I had a, a, a like really good nitro coffee at this one place. But um, what I tried one day because it was all cold and dreary and whatnot. I so I went for a hot coffee and like a latte, and I hadn't had a latte in a long time. And they had one special one that was just like it had cinnamon and like some orange zest with it. And I've never had something with like an orange kind of aftertaste. It was fucking amazing. I, I had it like the next two days in a row, and it was just like the the aftertaste of it was amazing. I just I couldn't even describe it. Yeah, love it. Good stuff. Next question is from Doc Sass. What advice would you give to someone who wants to start podcasting, or what do you wish you knew before starting your own? Don't do it. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's so oversaturated now. No, no, run right. for the hills. Everybody, and, everybody's and, doing it now, and we're very pro that. I think it's funny. We we have peers of ours that you know. I feel like they grumble when they hear, oh, you know, so many people are now podcasting. There, you know, when They're some people want to be, yeah, like I'm the opposite. Yeah. Like. The more people that get into podcasting, the better it is for all of us because it's just make, giving more awareness. Because they're trying to get more people into, you know, right? To I think to it's a stand. Like honestly, look at it as a website. You know, like if you don't have your own voice out there, like mm. in an audio form, then you're going to be way late to the game. So you might as well think about it's it. It's interesting to see what we see happening right now with business and advertising, and and this kind of where we're with a future where we're heading. Like, I mean, I really believe that. Uh, I mean television ads are on their way out. I don't know if you guys saw too, the Super Bowl is also was also tied to YouTube. They're yeah. making, you guys did see that Netflix um, every, did you movie see, did that you they're see advertising? Every, did you see every platform had their commercial? So yeah. you had Hulu had their movie, mm -hmm. uh, um, Netflix YouTube. had theirs, Amazon Prime, and you, they all had their own oh, movie premiere. I love it. I know, it was crazy. Yeah, so you see, crazy you, you see, see what's going on right now with all these, all these uh, businesses are all becoming very competitive in this space. And, TV is going to is going to die man. So mm -hmm. I think podcasting, especially if you subscribe to Gary V, you know, would tell you that voice is the future and that that's how we're going to do because we're not going to have want to look or we'll get something that would be just be able to hear it yeah. sure. you know wherever we're at so you could multitask and do something else it's yeah. grown so much over the last few years it's absolutely insane it, radio will be gone no yeah. one's going to want to listen to radio because you'll have all your music uh, through streaming it's amazing to me that radio still exists right now it with is. Pandora and with Spotify like, and what the fuck as soon as cars you know and as soon as cars make the full full switch that's it. Which it, most of them are almost there, right? Yep. Most of them are starting to look like an iPad or what that. So, yeah, man, if you want to get into podcast, I will tell you some things uh, that I w uh, that I wish I knew. I guess it doesn't matter if I wish I knew, because uh, probably if I did know this, it might have stopped us from doing it, and then maybe we would have never there. Because Sal talks about this a lot. Like, there's a part of our, um, uh, you know, blind faith that we had in ourselves going into this that probably we didn't we were unconsciously incompetent right about podcasting. right we did not we did not know how challenging it could potentially be um and there is there's a lot of pieces uh, there's a lot of moving parts it's to, hard it's hard to break f through i think you know yeah I, i'll tell you what it's if, definitely hard to break through uh here's some advice i'll give you right away um make it sound good and what i mean by that is not just the content of your show because everybody thinks content is important and it is very important but if your sound is shit and there isn't a nice produced intro or something that sounds professional in the beginning and at the end, you're going to get drowned out very quickly because there's so many people now yeah. entering into the podcast space now that a real easy way to separate them, when you have all this you know, content in front of you, an easy way to separate through as a consumer, you can't listen to all of them, is the professionalism. This one sounds good. It sounds clean. It's produced. This is one that I, th these are the ones I'm going to pay attention to. It used to not be like that. The irony of that is it's, it's pretty fucking obvious when you think about it, because that's the same as why it would be important for high definition or 1080p 
watching a t- video or a movie. Like you wouldn't go watch a. Mo- it could be one of the best movies of the year, but if someone shot it in 480 or shot it in like poor resolution, it would kill it. It would kill it. It would kill the movie. And so when you're talking about audio, you're, you're there is no visual involved with the, with podcasting. So the listening quality, it I think it trumps almost yeah. almost trumps content. Yep. yep. Because you could you could probably have because it's an it automatic seems obvious it's but an yeah, automatic it's not, shut off right yeah. as soon as it sounds shitty people turn it off so well, and it's that's not, a differentiating factor right if mm-hmm. your show sounds better and the quality's better you, that is going to be an advantage and so you got to think about all these things these differentiating factors like what's the flavor of your show what is different about your show than everything else you've heard mm-hmm. and you have to figure that out going in I think that's a, a the way to approach it as opposed to just kind of rolling with it and then figuring it out obviously like that was somewhat of our approach but we really did have a a clear focus of like what we're not hearing out there and what we really wanted people to hear so there was a clear objective well i also think too a lot of people that start podcasting do it to complement a business that they already have and we didn't really we built the business around the podcast and the podcast had a a mission and, and the main mission is to was to add value to people's lives right through what we thought was missing in health and fitness so i think having some sort of a direction of how are you going to add value to other people's lives and whatever your space is or whatever it is that you have to communicate you've you need to be pr- providing a certain value could mean it could be entertainment could be comedy could be something like that that be some a lot of people need that there's Motivational a huge or whatever. right whatever whatever it is you need to be able to add value to someone's life to get them to continue to subscribe and come back and listen more and then from there you can probably get creative and find a way to monetize that and and make money from that and if you do get into it thinking that advertising money is where you're going to make most of your money that you're more than likely going to fail heading in that direction that's not to say that people don't make a lot of money in advertising but you know being completely transparent about this business and i'm looking at our, our stats right now it wasn't until just three months ago did mind pump start making enough money in advertising that it even helped pay that it made any, a difference that it made any sort of a difference yeah the, the little bit of advertising money that we were getting the previous three years uh, isn't enough for any one of us individually to even come close to surviving off of. So, you know, it's barely even getting to a point that it makes a difference in the business. So if we would have got into it thinking that, hey, let's build this big podcast and then eventually we'll have lots of advertising. We, would have, we wouldn't have lasted. No, it'd be, there's no way. Yeah. yeah, sound is not that hard. Uh, just get a quiet room. You can use blankets on the walls to, to deaden the sound. The good news is equipment's cheap nowadays. Like, the equipment that you need to record a good podcast oh, now man. may run you maybe a thousand dollars at the most. Uh, you know, ten years ago that was you know ten twenty thousand dollars for the same kind of equipment. So, equipment is inexpensive, um, relatively inexpensive. Um, make sure you have a dedicated space to record. And then here's the other thing too: is when you're listening to a podcast, uh, what keeps you engaged is if the person is conversing. If it's a flow, if it's not this structured talk, like remember when you when you think about when you were when you had a class and there was a teacher that was conversing with the class and and having a good time and passionate, you were very engaged. Now think of those times that the teachers were had a slide up and were like did did it did it did did it. I mean, it totally was disengaging. You didn't want to listen to it and you just didn't want to pay attention. So whatever you're saying on your, I think a lot of people when they start a podcast, they think I have to deliver so much information mm-hmm. but really it's it's more important that you communicate a little bit of inf- information well versus communi- communicating a lot of information poorly mm-hmm. you know if i can communicate one point but do it in such a way to where you understand what i'm saying you feel what i'm saying and i impacted you that is way more successful than if i just give you 15 great pieces of information but none of them connected with you None of them impacted you. I didn't well, communicate this them is well. A, this is a lot of what we saw wrong in, in ours, or what we saw was we could come into our space. And, you know, when we first started, all of us looking at podcasts, like we were all kind of interested. We all had our own little podcast that we listened to that had nothing to do with fitness. But when we looked at the fitness space, which all of us would consider ourselves experts in that field, right? We've all got tens of thousands of hours under our belt of training clients and managing gyms and being in this industry. When we looked at the fitness space in podcasting, we, we weren't 
that impressed. There wasn't somebody that just stood out. And that's not to knock on any of our friends that are great podcasters within the fitness space. I, there was just nobody that I listened to that I went, man, I would listen to these guys or girls every single day because they're providing what I want to hear and what I personally wanted to hear. And I think that's all of us agree. This like, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to be entertained and listen and enjoy a podcast, but then at the same time to learn a little bit and get something from it. There just wasn't a lot of that. There was a lot of one or the other. We felt like there was a lot of purely entertainment type of podcast, and then there was pure education. There wasn't kind of this natural blend of great conversation where you could learn a little bit along the way, but then at the same time, too, enjoy great dialogue. In our space, there just isn't a lot of a lot of that. There really isn't. There's not there's not a lot of people that I would even consider our competition. Now, I think it's beginning to become competitive, and I see a lot of people starting to model their style of podcasting around that. Mm-hmm. But in our space, I thought there was a lot of room. Now, I don't know what this person does for a living and what kind of podcast you're in, but I definitely would evaluate the the space that I'm entering and what I see lacking, and then I would want to mold my my content in my show around whatever that is uh, versus what I see a lot now is people know that, oh God, podcasting is the next medium. Oh, I hear all this. Now I see a lot of uh, businesses that hire some random host and then they have a, a podcast that complements the business. And it's like, yeah. then it turns into like a commercial every episode and nobody fucking wants to mm-hmm. tune into that. That's no. why they're, they don't, they're not very successful podcast because not that many people want to just, just hear a fucking mm-hmm. commercial every episode. And I, you know, to, and here's a here's a slight knock on what I see with the on its podcast. You know, when we went over there and we spoke on uh, their Facebook, every fucking question was a supplement question. And that what that tells me is that much of what gets communicated on there is all about their supplements or else you wouldn't be driving only those comments. Like literally, we must have had 500 something people engage on that live Facebook thing that we did. And 95% of the questions were all surrounded around supplements. Now, that to me is an example of when you have a podcast that supports your business where most talk is around that. Now, Aubrey has his own podcast where he goes all over the place and provides lots of really cool guests on the show. And he talks about a lot of other things, I think, besides just the on its yeah. supplements, but I think that's one of and the And I think Kyle's taken in that direction of away from, I not he, away, but making it its own show. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And um, I've listened to you know some of his episodes, and he's doing that. But yeah, in the past, I think it was just a lot of it was just a commercial. The, yeah, yeah it was just a, com- a, a commercial to to advertise their product, which I think a lot of businesses do that. But I don't think it's it that won't s- grow massive that way. Right. Next question is from Lauren Bergman: healthiest and unhealthiest sport for your body? Hmm. Well, let's start with the unhealthiest. Uh, well, I think we all agree that all of them in one way or another in extreme forms yeah, is yeah. An ideal well I, I think all of them can be argued healthy and unhealthy right that's what i'm saying sure. there's there's healthy mm. ben- every sport has its benefits and every sport is going to have yeah. its its drawbacks right the, so the, the unhealthiest there's the easiest one for me to pick would be boxing i'd say mm. probably the unhealth if i mean if you're actually boxing not or, if you're or mma right not if you're just you know hitting the bag and hitting the mitts but if you're actually boxing in the ring that's got to be one of the the least healthy sports because of just getting punched in the just head, pure head trauma the whole time. And uh, you know the, the term "punch drunk" uh, is a term to describe what a boxer who's older than say thirty, uh, some of the you know the ways they move and talk, and it's an old term. And we know now that it's it's brain trauma. Boxers don't typically have good lifespans. They typically don't have uh, you know good mental health after they finish boxing. You know, even some some of the guys that we grew up with, like Evander Holyfield, like you hear him talk and it's like, fuck, man, you can tell that he's not, you know, the sharpest. Very few of them seem to have kept themselves pretty well. Uh, George Foreman seems pretty fucking sharp still. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen him recently, but I know when he was selling the George Foreman grill, it's like, huh, everything looks good there. But I'd say boxing's got to be, for me, the the most I'm gonna, unhealthy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with you because right now I can't think of anything off the top of my head that probably has, you know, there's probably sports well, that have higher injury Yeah, rates. I was going to say like higher risk sports, like extreme sports. If you if you lump those in like um, basically a lot of the- Yeah, like base jumping. Yeah, base, base jumping is one of them I was <laughs> yeah. going to say or, or yeah, like the, um, uh, yeah, because you die. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the other one, just like a lot of the motorcycle- 
um, you know, freestyle oh, like stuff X where you game, flip, X yeah, X game stuff. stuff. Where I mean, I don't know any one of those guys that hasn't had multiple fractures and you know, like like that's a humongous good, injuries. That's a good argument, Justin. I you know because boxing probably has the the most long term uh, detriments mm-hmm. to to your body, like because of the repeated blows. But you don't see a boxer every week going down with like a broken. I think most pro skateboarders and uh, yeah. mo- motorcycle cross X game cross guys will tell you they've had like thirty broken bones. It's just one have, slip up in your yeah, whole body. I think, I think like, Travis Persona one time did, talked about this. I think he has a he had had hundred and fifty surgeries or something like yeah, that. I mean yeah. that's so we have that's to if you're gonna add it all up, it yeah. looks pretty so, grim. So we have to look at it this way. We have because because you're right because if we start doing that god that's gonna be a difficult one but if we look at it like those are accidents so when you hurt yourself in skateboarding and motorcycle riding you're kind of making an act you know you're, you're in an accident you you don't do the trick you're not it's something that fails in boxing you can kind of make that argument but you can also make the argument that that's part of the sport like mm-hmm. you're gonna punch people in the head and you're gonna get punched in the head it's not like you fell like you didn't do a trick it's like, this is what we do. This is part of my right. sport. Or you could approach it like Mayweather right. and not get hit in, in yeah. the face right. quite if you, a bit. If you took, if you took um, right, if you took the success of the sport like that, right? Yeah. If you were pr- completely successful as a, as a uh, boxer and you were always successful as a motocross guy and you didn't ever miss, yeah. then of course boxing is... is Fo- football would be another one. I mean, football, yeah. you are going to for sure hit... There's going to be collisions. There's no way around it. Yeah, and that's got to be one of the top ones. What was it? What did they say? What's the average length of time a pro football? Fifty-five years old. Well, that's their age. That's the average lifespan. Yeah. But what's the average length that someone is a pro football player? Isn't it something like four years? Yeah, a couple years. It's like super short, right? I thought it was three the last time I I checked. I think it's super short. Like you just don't last that long uh, playing football. So healthiest, I'm going to go with swimming. Mm. Swimming. I feel like that's cl- that's got to be close, right? Because you could freestyle swim swimming. forever, yeah. right? Freestyle swimming, it just if, the way it incorporates just the right your amount body. of resistance, right? It gives you some resistance. It gives you hmm. some endurance and stamina. Uh, and I feel like it's uh, probably the most balanced too, as far as giving giving you imbalance. Like a, a freestyle swimmer is probably not going to create a lot of muscular imbalances as, as a lot of other athletes, right? So mm. I think Well, if that- you mix up your strokes, I have a client, I used to have a client that I trained for, I trained for about 7 years, old guy, he's 71 now, still works out by the way. The fittest fucking 71-year-old you'll ever meet in your entire life. And what yeah. he's done for the last I want to say 40 years, okay? So he's done this for 40 years and he is dogmatic about this. He's a single man, never been married, uh and he's just very he's got his routine. He's very disciplined. Every single night for 40 years, he swims for between 60 to 120 minutes straight, so nonstop. And what he does is, and this is how he hasn't developed imbalances, is he cycles through all the, all the strokes. So he'll go like freestyle, uh-huh. backstroke, he'll do butterfly, he'll do breaststroke, and he cycles through them. So he's, con- he's always moving in all these different directions. For 40 years, he's been doing it. So I think if you swam that like sense. that, that's got to be. Which I think almost every if you're a swimmer and yeah. you swim, like you do most all the, the yeah yeah you yeah. do most all strokes. So I would that would be my bet at the if I had to say the healthiest sport that's out yeah. there, I would. Say, I was gonna say golf, but yeah, you, you you're just so like one sided with the whole like experience. Yeah. Like you're definitely gonna create. Uh, imbalances and that's the um, challenge of, of most all sports is that you're you're gonna I mean if to be good at a sport it requires you to do something repetitively over and over mm-hmm. yeah. most things that in sports uh, that you do uh, shooting a ball hitting a ball throwing a ball um, are mechanically are is not advantageous for the body long term mm-hmm. but I think that swimming in my opinion is probably the most balanced uh, mm. movement yeah. that you well, would maybe rock climbing if you're not like super extreme with it you know just because of the the way that you're incorporating your entire body well then the I just don't see a lot of 80 year olds plus the plus the <laughs> yeah. plus the risk True. factor that comes with rock climbing you yeah. would, would make it lose to swimming but right? i just don't see a lot of 80 year olds yeah. I, I see a lot of 80 year olds who swim, swim right. every day right. and very fit True. don't see a lot of I'll tell you a sport that is actually great if you do it right. Jiu-jitsu. You could do forever is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, Jiu Jitsu. I was gonna say Jiu Jitsu was one of the ones I was thinking about up there, like because you're gonna be but rolling. It's still hard on your joints. It, well, if you do it right, it's great because you're on the ground. So it's not like judo where you're fucking throwing each other or wrestling where you're doing all these crazy explosive takedowns. Mm-hmm. You're on the ground. If you fight smooth and use technique, it can be something you do until I mean, I know Helio Gracie did jujitsu 
up all the way up until the day he died almost regularly. Mm-hmm. And of course he changed his style and stuff, but that's what's good about jujitsu yeah. is that you can do that. But I'll say this right now, the healthiest thing, if I had to pick one thing to do for the rest of my life, it's a very easy pick for me. That's resistance training. Nothing comes close because resistance training is, as Bruce Bruce Lee would say, like water. I can modify it however the fuck I want. You right, know what I'm right. saying? I could make the weight heavier, lighter. I could do mobility. I could focus on this exercise, that exercise. Oh, I hurt my knee. Now I'm going to do this particular resistance training or I did this. I could. Do. You can modify that for anything and it's the one form of exercise. If you had to pick just one, and mainly the reason why I think it's so awesome, there's two reasons. One, it's the form, the, the single form of exercise that directly counters the things that happen to you as you age. So as you age, hormones change, bones get weak, you lose mobility, you lose strength, metabolism slows down. All those are directly combated with resistance strength, like reversed right. with resistance strength. The other reason why I think resistance strength is the best form of exercise for longevity is because there is no form to it. And what I mean by that is there is no, like if you do yoga, I can't just get up and do random bunch of stretches and say it's yoga. A, a, yo- a person who's training yoga would look at me and be like, that's not yoga. I can't just make up a bunch of shit and say I'm playing football or, or golf or you know, swimming. You know, it's, it, People would say, well, you're not really doing the technique that classifies it as the thing you want to name it. Resistance training, there's a bunch of exercises, but it's limitless to how you can put them together, modify them. So because it's so formless... It's so individual. It's you can individualize it so much. Oh, I, I think nothing we, comes close. I think we all agree that, but it's not a sport, though. So yeah, we, sport. yeah. If it was, yeah. A, if if lifting weights was considered no. a sport, who do you guys think is the most? This is going to be a t- tough one. The most, the best all around athlete, like all around, like a person, like who? I yeah, think like agility, individual. strength, stamina. Like if you had to, like if you had everything. Who do you think would be? I would love to see LeBron. Le- James. LeBron. Oh God, if we're right oh, you're naming page. a person. I was, yeah. I was naming. I was naming a like a sport that would do it. But you uh, think LeBron? Yeah, yeah, just off of pure specimen of like what an right. athlete that's to what me I, looks that's, like. That's me too. Yeah, because like I just feel like I could put him in all kinds of different directions as far as sports are concerned. Right. Think of all the craziest. Do well. Like yeah, I bet you he could throw a fucking fastball. I bet you he could hit the ball probably decent. Right. Yeah. If he has some sort of hot hand-eye coordination, but even not, that's a skill that he could develop. He could jump out of the building, so he would probably make, <laughs> out of the building. he could probably make it. He'd probably make an amazing tight end in the NFL, and he's big enough to be able to probably. I mean, the guy's freaking. You got, think like Olympic weightlifting, he'd be at a disadvantage because of his height and everything, but he's super strong. Yeah, so right. I mean, yeah, you'd have at least like a good deadlift. Yeah, you probably, deadlift have, probably have a silver. I, I was uh, watching. We had lunch at this bar um, while I was up in Napa, and I was watching on the TV. They actually had collegiate wrestling on. I haven't seen it in a long time. Love watching it. And there were these two guys wrestling. One guy was from, I think he was Ohio. Anyway, these dudes were definitely like 220-pound dudes. They were big freaking dudes. And they were grappling. And the flexibility and dexterity and stamina, these fucking big mooses. And they were moose. Like you see their hands and their necks. But the dexterity and flexibility, I was watching these guys like, they try and take each other down. They grab a leg. Their hip would internally rotate to a point where for sure would tear my knee off. A hundred percent. Like if my leg is turning that way, my knee is torn. These are big fucking dudes and they're so flexible. The dude's leg is bending over here, but he's still maintaining his balance and he's gripping over. Then they get real low underneath the other guy and the stamina involved. I was like, damn, these guys are kind of they have everything. Stamina, strength, flexibility, mobility, like mm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You know, wrestlers have got wrestlers, to be up there. Yeah, that's, They've got to be up there that's with a that. Good, that's a good point. But I can't think of an athlete. I don't know sports like you guys do. Yeah, so. I was looking at, I was thinking more of a, a specific. Like an actual athlete. Yeah, an actual athlete that I could see crossing. What The way I was trying to answer that question was, what athlete do I know that I think could cross over the most yeah, you sports? put him in anything. Right. They, and even if it's not anything, right? Because obviously LeBron would suck at something, right? Maybe he sucks at tennis, right? Maybe, but even then, know, yeah. even then, I can see him hitting the fuck <laughs> yeah. out of a tennis ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So he just, to me, he's he's an example of just this genetic freak of a... I could guarantee if he gets in the pool, he'd be able to swim, outswim a majority of people. I guarantee that he's strong. How big is he? He's, I think, six. Well, look at his stats. Doug. Was it six eight, six nine? He's yeah. He's like six, six he's eight or six seven. nine, and he's like two fifty plus. You know, b- uh, basketball players are so different today than they did thirty years oh, ago. Oh God! But bro. he's so symmetrical, dude. And yeah. Like in lean and muscle wise, and like like explosive, six eight, mobile. You know, like he, his movement is yeah, really right. fluid. What's his weight too? So it's, it's hard to argue somebody that has a better like athleticism. Two fifty six eight. 
Six, you know, eight. back in the like, Bro. 30, 40 years ago, <laughs> so those big, guys were like dude, 200 so, pounds. And to the, move the way that he moves, yes. that's, that's why I'm so impressed. I, re- I, remember, the, I remember the difference. That's a giant. And I know I'm a, yeah. I'm a terrible example because I'm nothing like this specimen, but I remember when I sprouted my, uh, my junior year in high school. I shot up like six inches. I was before that I was a point guard, so I was like five one to five three, and then all of a sudden I was like six foot tall, right? And man, I just I was a different person now. I yeah. literally was like I and I from being somebody who played it's sports, hard to communicate, yeah, like, to your body. Person who that. played sports yeah. his entire life, I had to like to move this new lanky body around. It just was. It, I lost. I was never the same fast, quick, agile kid that I was my freshman year and before. It completely yeah. changed me. Completely. And it was a weird... I mean, I stopped playing soccer because of it. I was a better soccer player than I was anything else. And then when I got lanky, I became a better basketball player than I was a soccer player. Mm-hmm. And it was a really weird transition for me. I can't imagine... Being six foot eight, two hundred fifty pounds, and then I I know what my body felt like when I was two forty. I couldn't get for, I couldn't get fifty yards without. God, that's just a giant human being, right? Oh, like yeah. a human being that large that can move that fast, jump that high. I mean, it's just bro. His wingspan fucking, is seven yeah, feet. It's it's unreal. He's got a seven foot wingspan. He right. Could, imagine him boxing you. Bro. Yeah. Imagine boxing him. Like he's gonna fuck up yeah. a lot of people, bro. Yeah. Bro, he could yeah. he could sit across the room and slap Don't you matter. without getting up. Right. Like yeah. you know I think he across he, he would definitely be able to play a lot of sports and and dominate you know it's basketball players to me are very very fascinating because unless you've been to a game up close and see them like you brought it up sal the other day yeah, how often do you a see freak a freak show how often do you see a seven footer i challenge people to say how often do you see someone over six five yeah that's well, the entire NBA, yeah, by the no. way, yeah. right? The, how often do you see somebody over six five and two hundred pounds? You just never, you, you don't, just, you just never see that. I remember in jujitsu, well, yeah. we had my this dad. guy who came and uh, signed up for classes, and he was six, maybe six four, but he was three hundred and something like thirty pounds, mm-hmm. just a big per- human being, and he was a Canadian pro football player, so he wasn't even. NFL, he had played, and he wasn't like a starter or anything. Like, he just played in the Canadian Pro Football for a little while, right? So he's obviously a good athlete. And here he is. He's 330 pounds or whatever and never done jiu-jitsu before. And this fucking dude would do cartwheels and do jump flips. And and I'm, I remember watching this guy, and it really hit me at this moment like, there's a, there's a different breed of humans on Earth. Oh, like, for sure. That is a big person who... If you wanted to catch me, normally when you see a big person like that, you think to yourself like, yeah, if you wanted to get me, he couldn't because I'm just too big. I'm, I'm way faster. No, no, no. He could catch me super easy like a bear. Like he could catch me and eat me if he wanted to. It was really interesting yeah. to watch him move in jiu-jitsu. And I used to fight. So th- at this point, I had been training for a few years. And when I'd go against him, I would beat him barely. But it was all technique. And I'm not a weak dude. I'm strong. But he was this just this... Behemoth and uh, very genetics athletic. Play such a huge role. Does, and he wasn't even an NFL player. You know? Have you guys? Have you guys seen? Pull up uh, Saint Brown boys. Saint S T period Brown boys. There's. Have you guys seen these three boys? No. Oh, wait till you guys see these three boys. So these three boys. Uh, one I believe is a senior in high school. The other two are going to. One goes to USC and the other one goes to. Um, fuck Notre Dame. I think. Yeah, okay. Notre Dame. And all three of them are. You know. 4.0 GPAs, all all of them D1 D1 schools, star players for all for all their their football teams. The high school kid just took them to a national championship. The two football players are the like star wide receivers for Notre Dame and USC. And then the father literally talked about when he chose his wife. He 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 he, <laughs> he chose he chose his wife for breeding purposes. Oh my <laughs> god! He talks about it in this interview. I saw it the other day, the other day. It was uh. it was great. And and so and they also speak three languages. So the mom handled all the academics. She's this brilliant German woman. That's right? them right there. Yeah, that's three of them right there. She's this brilliant German woman, and so she handled all the academics with the boys. He handled all the sports, and they turned these kids into these fucking brilliant phenoms, dude. Damn, they're like hey, that's they the, had like a serious plan going into this. That's the totally. future of selective yeah. and you, breeding. And dude. you actually listened to their interview and talked to them, and it was what was fascinating because I know right now somebody hearing this is going like, I bet they have all these problems, and I bet actually not. They seem very normal as far as the way the kids are now. Parents that's not, are still married, everybody's. right? Parents still married. They they speak very highly of the dad. They said that the way that because they, they think it's very odd that all three of them end up being wide receivers for football. And they're like, well, did your dad tell you to be? This why and they're like no he asked us what our dreams were and what we wanted we all said we wanted to play in the NFL so he says I will do everything in my mission as your father to help you get there hmm. and so he was like every day 
practicing every day. They were with right because you never hear that story. You always hear the one where they're like breaking them, you right? Know? And they're like like at them every single day to be the best, and you know, and then that's that's the resent that comes after that. Hey, man, it's genetics. It's like when you have those musical family, like the Jackson Five. Right. Like they were all super talented in music or whatever. Yeah. Like, what you but doing? you always hear like crazy stories like that, and the, right. the father was abusive, and he was like, you know, and that's what drove them to sing these songs that all this abuse that they abuse that they had. <laughs> right. Where it, it, so far, like, okay, of course, it's early in their lives; they're only, you know, fr- and we don't know. Oh, right? This is because great. This is great to counter that. Easy. Like that, you don't have to have that formula, right? And yeah. I, it was why I was really into the interview. It was a really good interview. It was uh, real sports with Brian Gumble. And, you know, they did this whole interview with the parents. They did the interview with the kids. And you listen to it and you think, fuck, man, this is this is really cool because I think you, to Justin's point that people do, they always, they assume that, oh, if, you know, these parents are just like like trophy kids that What's-His-Face yeah. did, that one mm-hmm. documentary, right? That's like they these parents that they're, they're, Bell, they're, yeah. they're uh, imposing their insecurities and what they wanted for their lives on their kid, which ends up resentment and all this later, where it doesn't sound like that. These kids are like, this is really what I want to do and whatever it takes to get to the NFL. And my dad's been teaching me and leading me the way. And I mean, it's, it's a pretty cool story. That's so awesome. If you guys have never heard of them, the St. Brown's St. Brown brothers. They're That's pretty, awesome. Pretty cool. So check it out. If you go to YouTube, do we got those videos going up there soon? Is that this month that we got those videos going up or is that when's this video? When's this episode go up, Doug? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. So I don't, I, the, we, we have some surprises on YouTube. That's what I'm going to, that's all I'm going to say. If you go to our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. Well, you could tell people we got what, some stuff coming up. You could tell them what's coming up because it, it will be dropping the next day or two from when this releases, and and it's just, what we're going to do is allow people to test drive the Maps Red program. Mm-hmm. So if you've ever considered starting one of the Maps programs, we're going to give you and, the first five days, right? So for free. we lay it all out on the YouTube channel so you can start it, follow it, and uh, see if it's something for you. And then, of course, all programs have so, a thirty day money back guarantee. That's so. it. Subscribe to the channel. Um, we post new videos all the time. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.